This screencast is about monopolistic competition, and we're going to look at how it moves from the short run to the long run. Um, you've got a picture here of your favorite pair of jeans, and that's because the retail industry is probably the best example used of monopolistic competition. When you think back to where we started with that scale of like how many firms are involved with the different types of competition, and we said a monopoly was one firm and a perfect competition, we could put like 80 to 100 firms. If we were talking about monopolistic competition, we would say that monopolistic competition would be somewhere maybe between 20 and 80 firms. It's got a lot of competition. Um, and so what this does is it allows for there to um, be firms that can enter and exit into the industry with relative ease, and that has a major impact on how the firm can break even in the long run. So let's take a look at how that can happen. This situation here is your monopolistically competitive graph. Notice it looks very similar to the monopoly graph. You've got your downward sloping demand curve, which is equal to your average revenue, which is equal to your price. You have your marginal revenue curve that is less than your demand curve because in order to increase output, they have to lower the price, not for just that next unit, but for all previous units. Um, you've got your marginal cost curve that looks like the Nike swoosh, and where it intersects the ATC here is at its minimum or productive efficiency. Um, MR equals MC gives you the profit maximizing output and this is the quantity that they'll produce at. You take it up to the demand curve, and that's going to give you the price. In order to figure out economic profit, you take price minus ATC times quantity, and that's going to give you this economic profit here. Um, it's just like with the perfectly competitive in the short run. They either have economic profit or they're suffering a loss. And again, in this case here, you have it where they have economic profit. And so what happens is that in the long run, you've got that entry and exit of the firms, but they're not price takers where we have that side-by-side -side comparison and you're looking at how the supply will shift the price and that's what changes. Instead, you need to think about the competition that is, happens and the demand that is affected by the entry and exit of firms. So in this case here, we've got economic profit. So monopolistic firms are going to be um, very interested in this industry. And so they're going to enter into it. And what happens then is that the demand curve for this firm will shift to the left. It will decrease because more firms are coming in. So that means now consumers have other places to choose to buy. And so they're going to have a reduction in the amount that are going to be willing and able to buy their product. And so that's why you have this decrease in the demand curve, which also means a decrease in the marginal revenue curve. The other thing to recognize here is that if more firms enter into the industry, that means that more substitutes are going to be available. And so the demand curve not only shifts to the left, but becomes a little bit flatter because it becomes a little more elastic. And as a result then, because of this ease of entry into the industry, the um, monopolistically competitive firm will break even in the long run. That formula that we're talking about for break even is price equals ATC. And again, there was profit, firms entered into the industry, demand shifted to the left because there were more substitutes available. And so then, as you can see here, you now have an ATC curve that is tangent to the demand curve. Still producing where MR equals MC, take it up to the price, but now you have an ATC curve that is tangent with the demand curve. Okay, so now let's look at it here where we've got this economic loss. Again, we've got our marginal cost curve. We've got our ATC at this profit maximizing output of MR equals MC, where you take it up to the demand curve and you get that price. The ATC is above it. And so when we calculate our economic profit here of price minus ATC, you have this distance multiplied by the quantity, and that's going to give you the economic loss. So there's loss. So what happens because there's this ease of entry and exit, firms are going to exit out of this industry because they're not going to be able to survive. 
And as they exit out, that means for the firms that stay in, there's going to be an increase in the demand for their goods because there aren't as many substitutes out there that are available. And so the demand curve will shift to the right. When your demand shifts, your marginal revenue curve shifts. And again, it becomes a little more inelastic because firms were exiting out of the industry, which caused this firm to have an increase in demand. But when you talk about substitutability, you find here that the demand curve is more inelastic. And so in the end, when these firms are exiting out and that demand curve is shifting right because there was that economic loss, the demand curve will move to the point where it becomes tangent at MR equals MC with the average total cost curve. And again, we will have a firm that will break even in the long run. The only reason the monopolistically competitive firm can break even just like the perfectly competitive firm breaks even in the long run, is because of that ease of entry and exit um, of the firms in the long run.